going to read verses 3 and 4 where the Lord has taken me at this morning. Pray that it will be a blessing to us. Thank you, BJ. I hear you. <laughs> the scripture says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Verse 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. Let's read verse 3 all together one more time. Everyone, let's read. You will. One more time. One more time. Amen. I want to talk to you from the subject this morning. Shalom, 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 shalom. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have been having an ear to hear what God has really been saying to our church and what those of you have been online, those of you have been here. And if you haven't, you can go and watch YouTube channel and, 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 and listen to the messages or on the app. But the Lord has had us in a particular place where I've been telling you we just have to outlast the season that you're in. And um, I've been talking to some friends and talking to some people that, you know, randomly at work and people have been just so anxious. I've been hearing so much in conversation, conversation about anxiety, so anxious. And I'm like, we live in a culture now that people are just so anxious, more anxious than what they've ever had been. I was talking to a cousin uh, on my uh, wife's side and they were saying how she works in the particular call center and fills the calls and she said you've been seeing a lot of 30 year olds being rushed to the hospital because of heart attacks because of heart attacks and I said to myself I said you know that shouldn't be because people are living so anxious Ladies and gentlemen, it put my attention to, to this particular verse. And here's what I like about this. This is a song of praise. Isaiah 26, ladies and gentlemen, is a song of praise. And, the, and, and what Isaiah is doing is he's praising God for the fact of that he is one who is able to keep us in perfect peace that he's able to keep us in perfect peace. Say to yourself, he can keep me in perfect peace. Ladies and gentlemen, when you really evaluate this scripture, ladies and gentlemen, and you look closer in the text, in the Hebrew, when it says perfect peace, it actually means peace, peace. It's saying that he will keep, so the translation really would read, it says you will keep him in you will keep him in peace, peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So, ladies and gentlemen, this peace that God, that the psalmist, is, uh, that Isaiah is talking about here is that this peace that is perfected. Because the one who is perfect in all of his ways does not give us anything that's imperfect. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a peace that the wicked have that is fleeting. There is a peace, ladies and gentlemen, that the wicked may have and may feel that it, it, it is on based on their emotions, how they're feeling at the time. But the thing that separates us, ladies and gentlemen, or what separates the peace of God versus the peace that man is, it, it experiences outside of God is that this peace surpasses all understanding. This peace, ladies and gentlemen, this particular tranquility or this sense of calmness, ladies and gentlemen, is a peace that God gives us no matter what life is throwing at us. Ladies and gentlemen, this peace, it cannot be explained. It can be experienced. That's why sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, people ask you, like, how are you so calm even when you know things are going wrong? Because I have a supernatural peace that is in my spirit. How is it, ladies and gentlemen, with all that's going on in life and what you see right now and even what you may be experiencing even uh, uh, internally that they're, they're, you can't explain this calmness, but you have a calm about you in this moment. And, you know, for somebody who's real, uh, a real uppity, you know that that ain't you. 
Why? Because God, when you are a believer, what gives us this peace of God is that we have peace with God. In order for you to have the peace of God, you must have peace with God because Christ has already made peace for us. And so now that Christ has made peace for us, now all of it, now we don't no longer have to have enmity with God because that has already been done on the cross. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin that you may become the righteousness of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so, ladies and gentlemen, that this particular peace that Isaiah is speaking of is that when you have the peace, when you have peace with God, now you can have the peace of God. You can experience this calmness. You can experience this tranquility. And what I begin to read about this verse and really look at it is this. He said, I'm able to keep you in such this perfected peace or this peace peace, meaning that any time in scripture where you see something that is repeated twice like that in this particular scripture, it is showing you that God is trying to get something, uh, something to us very loudly to help you understand that this peace peace this shalom shalom ladies and gentlemen is only experienced ladies and gentlemen when your mind is stayed on him the real battle, ladies and gentlemen, that I told you, you have to fight for your peace. You can, the enemy, when people say, oh, the devil, he stole my peace. He can't steal nothing from you unless you willingly. Look at somebody say, you got to willingly give it over. You can't take something that you never gave me. And if you can't take something that you never gave me, then that means that I have to willingly give it up. And the way we willingly give it up is when our mind is all over the place. The reality, ladies and gentlemen, is our mind is traveling a mile in a minute. It's on this. It's on that. It's on all the stuff. What I got to do today? What I got to do this? I, all of this stuff that's going on in my mind and your mind is so crowded and it's so busy and it's all a lot of stuff going on. And then you forget God in the whole picture. Oh, man, how am I going to get this bill? How am I going to get that? How am I, how's this going to come together? How is this going to see itself? And your mind is racing and racing. And when your mind start racing, the little by little, your peace is becoming disturbed. You're losing peace in the middle of where you are. Oh, Pastor B, oh, my God, rent is going crazy. It's getting increased. Let me, I tell you, I can tell you about that. Listen, oh, my God, oh, my goodness, the groceries is, is, is crazy. It, the cost is killing me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I want to go, let me stop right here. I want to go get a, them little ice cream cones that look, that would be cheap. And I just, <laughs> I looked at the ice cream cones. I'm like, $6. I'm putting this back. <laughs> what? There ain't never been no $6. You get what I'm saying? You're looking at all of this stuff that's going on. And your peace is being disturbed. Can we go deeper? Let's go deeper. You have, a, you have friend groups. You've got family, ladies and gentlemen. And we sometimes take on other people's problems. True. That ain't your one. Neither did I create it. So it ain't my problem. But some people, when you are Mr. or Mrs. Fixer everything, you feel you take on everything. And guess what happens? When you're in trouble, no one's there. Now, it's quiet in here. I know I'm probably talking to some of us in here. Now, let's tell the truth now. You be the one. You know it's your pockets that they come to. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. So, 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 then not only that, but then sometimes, let's go even deeper. We entangle ourselves in certain uh, relationships that you know is never going to work. I'm talking about platonic and intimate. Are you hearing what I say? And it's a lot of drama. We live in a time now, ladies and gentlemen, that, oh my God, drama sells. It wins. And it's so attractive in that people actually want it. You think I'm lying. It's the truth. It's almost like people crave for it. 
It's like they get, they, 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 they that fuels them. I can't be, a, you got to be careful of people like that. You got to be careful who's always fueled by something or knowing or want to know what's going on here and there. And that somebody who's messy. You got to be careful of that. Why? Because it can disturb peace. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that inadvertently you have a, 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 a crafty uh, uh, adversary. His name is the devil. And let me tell you something. He can use anybody. And some people are being used and don't even know they're being used. Why? Because the battle is over your mind. That's why one of the biggest, why is the battle over your mind? Because one of the biggest commandments in the New Testament that Jesus gives is to love the Lord God with all your heart and all of your mind. Why? Because whatever you are thinking is what you're going to act on. Are you hearing what I say? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the mind that is the wrestle. Oh my God, it's your heart and your mind. That's where the battleground is. And if you are not careful, not only is your peace can be disturbed by the people around you, but what you intake can disturb your peace. What you're listening to, what you're watching, all of those things can disturb you. If you're not careful, that's why the Bible says you have to guard your heart above all else because out of it flows the issues of life. Are you hearing me? Here's the reality. And so we don't realize that certain things that we are intaking, the people that we are around, all of those things are influencing our mind. And guess what? When things are happening around us, when we are, are because of what we've put our attention on and what we have been watching, now we have now taken God out of the equation and we are so anxious. We're so full of anxiety. Looking at other people on social media, comparing yourself to who, who got this and who got that and wishing you were that and wishing you were this. And all of those stuff is disturbing your peace. And your mind is not even on God. It is focused on your own lustful desire. Can I help us in the room that God gave me? God can't keep nothing you ain't never give to him. The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace. Who do what? Whose mind is stayed on you. If you never let, if your mind is not in his possession, how can he keep you? How can he keep your heart if it's not in his possession? Oh my God. Can I help you understand something on the natural level? Ladies and gentlemen, there are certain borders that if you stay in these borders, that when, 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 when a U.S., uh, 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 when an ambassador of the U.S. is traveling, they know where their safe border is at. <laughs> they know where to go, that where they're going to be kept safe, it is the embassy. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen is the embassy that keeps the ambassador safe ladies and gentlemen and if they're not comfortable then all they can do is stay at the embassy here's the problem with us ladies and gentlemen we don't know who to take our refuge in because you don't fully know God you can't have calm if you don't really know him you can't have peace if you really don't know him well, my God, there's certain people, you know, you have peace with your parents because, you know, they can be trusted. So I have a calmness. I will go to them. You only go to people you trust. Some people you trust you shouldn't go to anyway, but that's another subject. But the reality of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, is that real peace is found in Christ. The Bible also says Isaiah is the person that said it as well, that he is the he is the prince of peace. That's it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a perfect peace, a, a perfect tranquility, a perfect sense of calm that you're missing when you don't trust God. Why do you think it says whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you? You don't keep your mind on something you don't trust. Well, Pastor B, I do trust God, but you don't trust God in every area of your life. 
because the things you don't trust him with, your mind don't go to him. Because you're trying to figure out how can my intellect get me from point A to point B? Because you don't feel like the author and finisher of your faith can get you to that particular point. <laughs> and anxiety creeps in when I should have turned 30 and this should have happened and that should have happened I'm a 45 or 50 years old and I have all of this regret and I should have did this and I should have been there and all of this is going on in your mind why because you're not at peace with your decisions because a lot of regret is found when your mind is not stayed on God and that's what creates trouble. And if you're not careful, it creates trouble with those who you parent. Why? Because then you start trying to live what you didn't live through them. And now you have enmity between the child and the parent. Why? Because I'm not at peace. So many people our age, ladies and gentlemen in the 30s, how many of you all in your 30s in the room? I'll raise my hand, amen. Don't be ashamed to tell your age. It ain't that big a deal. Listen, sometimes what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is what the social media is great, but you know what the problem is? Is us trying to look at each other and thinking that there's a faster way to get somewhere, looking through the hoops and all of that stuff to get somewhere where you where it, and, 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 and then here it is. If I don't get there or don't do what they did, then I feel like I'm a loser yeah. or I didn't accomplish anything. Yeah. That's a danger. Yeah. Because guess what? Now the fact is, is that you have now allowed yourself to give over your peace because you are now disturbed because you have a problem that you're not where you want to be. I'm not where I want to be. That's fine. But guess what? Be at peace to know that you have a God that can get you where he wants you to be. Yeah. Are you hearing me in here? What does it mean, ladies and gentlemen, to gain the whole world, but yet your soul is not at peace? Ladies and gentlemen, you rather chase you rather go after God and do what he wants and be at peace than to give up your peace for a moment of gratification that will fade. He said, I will keep, you will keep them. You will keep him. You will keep him in perfect peace who mine has stayed on you because they trust in you. Here we go. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, be anxious for nothing but in everything I pray in supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And here's what Paul said, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will do what? Guard your hearts and minds through, G through Christ Jesus. See, the problem is, is that when your mind is not stayed on him, then God can't give you that peace and guard you when you feel a flood of emotions coming in your heart. He said, I can give you this perfect peace. But guess what? The, what you have to do to show that you trust God is bring it to him. The problem is, is that you weighing, you weighing yourself down with all of the baggage and all the junk. And you keeping it and you internalizing everything. And you're not going to God. Some of us are internalizing too much, trying to figure out, well, I could do it by myself. I can figure this out. I can get over it. Why do that when you have a savior that's came beside you and is willing to do it with you? Well, guess somebody say, stop internalizing. Because guess what? If you don't, if you stop doing that, then guess what? Then God can meet what you have in your life. God can meet you where you are. You have to understand that this is not some big God that cannot be touched. The Bible says that he's in touch with our feelings and our infirmities. And he will guard your heart and he will guard your mind. Let's go here. Isaiah 12, 2 says this. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for Yah, Jehovah. The Lord is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Yeah. 
He has become my salvation that ladies and gentlemen that in him when you put your mind in him he becomes a refuge for where you need and I think sometimes we overlook the fact that God is a refuge because guess what you can tell him things and know it ain't gonna get out (laughs) you can tell him stuff says trust in the Lord for in him he's an everlasting strength that means that when I come to him when I come to God in prayer ladies and gentlemen prayer is not for God it's for you prayer is what changes you in prayer ladies and gentlemen because what happens is is when you exchange your burdens and give it to Christ then he exchanges your burdens with his strength Ah, that when you give to see what happens is is that then that strength that supernatural strength comes upon you and then you can carry on and persevere in what you're going through right now see sometimes people don't outlast the season they're in is because they're still trying to hold on to everything but if you come to God as you are and say God just as I am listen I got this going on that going on all of this going on and I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown but guess what I'm about to do I'm I'm gonna make an exchange. I'm gonna throw off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. And when I put the garment on, all of a sudden, the everlasting strength of the Holy Ghost empowers me and say, You can go on. Shout hallelujah. Look at somebody say, Shalom. May the peace of God be with you. What you need is the peace of God. You were disturbed, but if you can just take a hold of the peace of God. Listen here, God will hide you. When you come in, he is your hiding place. Those times when you feel afraid, your daddy takes you under his refuge and say, guess what? You ain't gonna try to come against my child. I got them covered. Ah, the Bible say they that abide under, oh my God, the shadow, oh my God. Those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty, oh my God. When you, when he abides, when you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, ladies and gentlemen, underneath his wings is the protection. It's the protection. It's the protection. And this is why people are living so anxious. It's because they don't feel safe. And God is saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why you got to carry it when I can give you rest? Why you still trying to stay sleepless when I can give you rest? Why you still trying to figure it out by yourself when I can give you rest? You don't got to figure things out. I already figured it out. All you got to do is trust in me. And when you trust me, then I will lead and guide you to where you need to be. But I ain't doing it until you give me your mind, till you give me your heart and when you give me your heart and give me your mind and give it over then I can show you where you need to go it says in God he's an everlasting strength it didn't say he has everlasting strength he is everlasting strength from everlasting to everlasting his truth is enduring he's not he don't he he's not he is it He don't got to draw it from nowhere if he has it. But he is it. (laughs) Oh my God. I praise you now. I got to bring this to a close. Because the reality, ladies and gentlemen, is, and even when I was thinking about it, there are times where, listen, where have I robbed myself of allowing the peace of God, the shalom, the shalom? There's been times, ladies and gentlemen, in this year where, ladies and gentlemen, where I've been worried, like, hey, how is the rent going to be paid this month in this church? How is this going to happen here? How is that going to happen here? And then all of a sudden, if you ain't going to be honest, Pastor Bia, be honest. And then all of a sudden, God does something out of nowhere. He brings the blessing out of nowhere when you didn't see it and all you was doing was worrying and worrying What you gotta worry for what you gotta be afraid of why because if I told you to do it I'm gonna keep you if it's my will it's my bill and I'm paying for it tonight Look at somebody say God is gonna pay Hallelujah my God in here now I got peace 
peace to know that even wherever I am, God has me where he wants me. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but I don't know if you worried about something. Let me tell you something. Over used to say you may he may not come when you want to, but he's always on time. You better understand when I think about it further, God don't have no time because he exists outside of time. And what may seem late for you is always on time of God. Because the reality is all you're doing is walking up to what he already had ordained in the first place. All oh, it was already there. Your provision was already there. All you needed to was to get to it. <laughs> ah, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I'm reminded of Abraham. Ah, God told him, hey, I want you to sacrifice your son. He didn't argue with God. He said, come on, lad. We going up to the mountain. We going to worship. Hey, and he said, we going to come back. And so the men that were traveling with him, Abraham told him, me and the lad are going to finish the journey. And we going to take these sticks and all of that stuff that we have to build the altar and we're gonna go up and uh we're gonna worship and we're coming back down ladies and gentlemen the bible tells us in romans that oh my god because of the faith of abraham he did not know how they were gonna come back down but he trusted in the fact that he was coming back down with him and his son oh my god ladies and gentlemen he just knew in his heart that though there had never been a resurrection at that point of scripture that is recorded he just knew that my god he ain't gonna give me a promise he ain't no indian giver that he gonna give in this take like that ah no 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 oh but he said me and the lad we going up and we going to worship and guess what abraham trusted god even to the point when he was about to take that knife and kill him and sacrifice his son on that altar and when god knew he said i thought now i know what am i trying to tell you that the eighth the, the, guess what as they were climbing up the mountain there was already a ram already in the bush caught in the thicket that all god needed to see was the faithfulness you got to know that sometimes what your provision is is already there it's just the fact that god will let you go all the way to the last minute to see how faithful you gonna be until the last drop and when he saw that abraham was faithful the bible says that it was accounted unto him righteousness hallelujah because he saw that the grace of God was seen on that mountain and he withheld his hand but when you fast forward 2,000 years later God had the same decision where he sacrificed his own son on the same very mountain and he didn't withhold himself but now he let him die so that you and I could have peace with him and so that he knew his son, he could be an everlasting strength to you. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all what? Your heart. Don't lean on your intellect. Don't lean on your understanding. But guess what it says? In all your ways, acknowledge him. That means in all of your ways, acknowledge that God is God. Acknowledge that, that God is the universe. Knows my beginning from my very end. Acknowledging the fact that I'm going to praise God because he's going to direct my path. Hallelujah, that when I acknowledge him, I now bring the presence of God in my situation. Hey, my family may be out of trouble, but I acknowledge God that you are oh my God the God of peace and you can bring me peace right here oh my God I lost a loved one but God you can give me peace right here cause you said you're the God of all comfort God I'm running low on funds and I don't know how I'm gonna get the next day oh but if you're trusting God oh my goodness he's able to be a provider for you in that moment Listen, uh, God is more than able. But guess what? When you have that, uh, when you have that assurance, you can have this perfect peace. Hallelujah! But I can tell you all of this, but it ain't gonna matter if you don't experience it. The reason why I can preach hard like this because I've seen it for myself. 
I don't got to make nothing up to you. You ain't that important. Neither do I care because I know it for myself. You can be a skeptic all you want to, but it works for me. It don't matter to me. All I'm going to tell you is taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you ain't willing to taste, hey, that's on you. But I taste it for myself and I'm convinced that God is real. Hallelujah. You can look down all you want to and think that this God thing, religion thing was all made up for man to control people. It wasn't made up from nobody because the reality of the matter is there is a true and living God. His name is Jesus and from eternity's past he's called this world all into existence and the reality is if he can keep the universe and keep the stars in the sky, keep the sun rotating, keep the earth rotating on a certain axis Surely he can look out for me. <laughs> I, I feel my health now, dog. I, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They are mount up like wings as an eagle. And they are running, not get tired. Woo! I'm saying the peace, the peace of God. How do I be at peace? Because I know I'm not in control. <laughs> I can be at peace because I'm not fighting this one this time. Ah, uh, this battle ain't mine. I'm just going to sit here. The Bible says in Psalm 46, be still and know that he is God and that he will be exalted. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are certain times in life that I got to fight and there's other times where I fight sitting down because all I got to do, pass me that seat, Pastor Don, is while all of this stuff is going on around me, all I got to do is sit, relax, put my feet up here, and just sit down and watch how God fight my battles. The Bible says that, guess what? You got enemies at work. Guess what? He preparing that table while I sit down. <laughs> I just got to sit down and just watch and see. Because <laughs> he'll make his enemies my footstool. All I got to do is wait. I wait on the Lord and be of good courage. <laughs> The view looks mighty good up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think I'm going to stress over this? Please. I'm going to just sit down right here. Some of you, you running, you running too much. You allowing people to run you in the ground. Sit down. Shalom, shalom. Peace, peace. I'm going to sit right here. That's fine. Oh, you said that? Oh, that's fine. At the end of the day, God is going to vindicate me. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> you want something to eat too, sweetie? You hungry? That's the best you can do. I'm going to sit down. Why? Because I'm not worrying about stuff that, I, that is outside of my control. Here we go. I'm done. Here we is. Here it is. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us fear things that are not even real. A lot of us fear possibilities in our mind that has not even came to pass. You, I don't know about you, but some of us create scenarios. I know sometimes I have. We play out all these scenarios in our mind and we make it feel real. And that's where anxiety starts. Because you're coming with scenarios that is not even real. It hasn't even happened. You got a new somebody in the hospital. Oh God, they're going to die. Seriously. First thing come to mind, good Lord, 
It could have been something so simple. It could have broke a leg or something. Oh God, we may never walk again. All of this stuff, I'm dead serious. People have this stuff in their mind. Playing 24, oh. don't let me get a call. If somebody called me in the midnight hour, it's like, okay, what's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Prince is laughing. <laughs> That's between me and you. I'm like, okay, what's happening here? Why? Because we have all of this stuff in the mind. Ain't happened yet. Let it be what it's going to be until it happens. Put it on a t-shirt. Let it be what it's going to be. If it manifests in the earth, then I'm gonna let God handle it and we gonna figure it out then but I'm not gonna tussle with stuff that ain't real can I give you an example when we was going through this and getting getting this building and all of that stuff I already had in my mind like when they was telling us we'll give you the money back all of this stuff like that I said God people gonna think I'm a liar they gonna think I, 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 I misused the people. I've never done that ever in my life. I would have never done this. If, you, if, 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 if this was gonna be like, I would have never done this. Crying, grown man, hey, real thugs got real tears too. Cause your integrity on the line. It's better to have a reputable name. And so I'm going through all the motions. God said, sit down somewhere. First of all, I'm the one who told you about this. You didn't know that this was even a thing. I told you about this. You gonna do this, that, and that. Stop worrying about stuff that ain't happened. You already took your mind to thinking negative. And even if a negative outcome comes out of it, you have to remember Romans 8, 28. All things are going to work together. Oh, you thought I was going to tell you something positive every time. That's the problem where people are because you don't, there's not always positive outcomes. Sometimes a loved one does die, but that is still a positive outcome if they knew Christ. You get what I'm saying? The negative is, is the, in the sense of our, our separation. That's the grief. But for a true believer, it's a celebration. If you're not, I don't know. Just being honest. There's not always, a, you always don't get the outcome you want or you thought you would get. But you have to know that all things are going to work out. That's what keeps you in the peace of God. Knowing that God can take the good, the ugly, the indifferent of life and turn it for your good. What do you think about Joseph? all that he went through he says it wasn't you who put me there God put me in that position so that I could save you what the enemy meant for evil God turned it for my good that's my peace stand to your feet I'm finished I'm finished Shalom. Shalom. Lord God, I pray right now, right now for your people. I pray right now for them today. That God, that you would give them, that they would yield to your will. And yield to the peace that you have available to them today. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, allow us to know God today. That God, you have everything under your control. That I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You will not let the you will not let the righteous be moved today. And so, God, whatever we have going on in our minds, God, let rest into the minds of your people today. God, we decree and declare: May your people stop worrying and bring it to your feet today and lay it there and keep it there not to pick it back up 
but to leave it at your feet because when we're at it when it's at your feet you'll give us that peace that surpasses all intellect all understanding a tranquility of heart a tranquility of mind will enter our souls today in Jesus name listen if you're in the room and you feel yourself being very anxious right now in this moment why don't you lift your hands to God and just give it over to him right where you are just give it to him open your mouth nobody's looking at you just open up your mouth and give it to him give it to him right now at his feet say Lord it's I'm here and I, I just got this going on. I got that. Just give it to him at his feet in your own way. Lord God, we thank you right now for this moment, Lord. Right now in Jesus' name, we thank you, God. We thank you, oh God. In this moment, your people are giving all. Blessed Savior, oh I. I surrender all. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I surrender all. I love you, Jesus. Oh, all to thee, my blessed Savior. Jesus' name, bound, oppressed, sick or lame, but the power of the Lord is still, it's still the same, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' Jesus, my father knows somebody needs to hear this what you're going through my father knows and he's reaching out to you there's no need to run from him he loves you so so come to him Cause my father he knows if you don't know Jesus I offer you Jesus today I offer you the Prince of Peace hallelujah he died on the cross and he was buried and he rose again and he put us in right standing back with God and today he's offering himself to you offering himself to you today is the day of salvation if you want to rededicate your life back to Christ you say hey pastor B I drifted off guess what that's okay guess what God is here with open arms for you to come back home today don't listen to the lie of the enemy say God don't want you he does he never changed from the situation you did but he ain't throwing shame on you he said come back home daughter come back here son arms are open if you're looking for a church home I would love to be your pastor but I'm more concerned I'm more importantly concerned that you join the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because you can be a part of a church all day all day if you want that don't mean that you're making it into heaven you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you are saved so with every head bow every eye closed Repeat this prayer after me, everyone, so no one feels left out. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I acknowledge today that you died on the cross, that you were buried, you rose again, and you ascended to the right hand of the Father just for me. Today, I'm giving you my life. I'm not letting another day go by 
without you being the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, today I'm saved. If you said that for the very first time, I want to share with you Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of you watching online, you text that number at your screen. If you're glad to be, if you're glad to be here and you're glad for the peace of God, come on and give God praise there. Come on, give him praise right there. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Dom is coming. It's offering time because my father.